wanted to make a video here about this. Um, I actually discovered this about three days ago on Marino Delfino. It, the name of the video is called The Thing Draco Archon Brain Parasite. A parasitic alien brain worm basically is what it is. I imagine it bores into your pineal gland and then it starts, it, it hijacks your reality, your consciousness. It, it, it hijacks your experience. Everything, everything you perceive is energy flowing through your pineal gland is causing you to have this life experience. Well, okay, think of your head as a radio or a television or a transmitter and think of your pineal gland as the antenna. If if somebody comes along and plugs a wire into the antenna to feed it alternative vibrations and energy instead of what it's supposed to be picking up then you get a hijacked reality which is what is going on and this is how they are controlling people with these Archon Brain Parasite Worms. Now before I play this video I want you to hear what uh, the video description I want to actually read this to you. Published on January 31st 2014 Insectoid with alien gray head and sharp teeth found in London UK. You can actually see the mouth on it with teeth. Uh, WTF is it? According to Bro Thub Tendakapa, hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is what he states on his website, which I will link up in the bottom. The thing even has horns. That is a serpent. That is a beast. That is the Draco reptile. Those are currently in many heads and all to ill effect. Devil worshippers love that thing because it makes them rich and famous. This is the snake on the crown of all the Egyptians. It lives in human heads and controls them. It is literally the Satan serpent. That is the satanic serpent brain parasite. In the Templar's ritual, kissing the anus, that was the ritual where it would jump from one satanic ass into another's demonic mouth. Look at the pharaoh crowns. Look at those snakes worming out of the foreheads. That is the serpent, satan, reptile snake in the head in all of them. So they did mummification to come back in the right bodies. Praying Mantis or Praying Mantis Aliens. They are even fewer reports of a Praying Mantis type alien. They are usually seen in the ships with gray or reptilian aliens but seem to be in charge or command. The Praying Mantis got its name because when it feeds it looks like a man praying with his hands together. The ancient Gnostics text found in Nag Hammadi speak of a type of parasitical entity that controls a man's thoughts. This appears to be the inspiration for the pilot episode of Star Trek, the original series, as well as the episode from Star Trek Voyager in which an alien presence invades Captain Janaway's cerebral cortex and poses as her father in order to convince her she is dead so that the alien can feed off her energy in its light matrix. Researcher John Lash, L-A-S-H, has a lot of material about the mind parasites called archons, the little gray archons or archon aliens and mind parasites, from the biblical serpent who tempted Adam and Eve to the Sumerian accounts. The Bible also describes Satan as a dragon. I am embarrassed seeing what I wrote to you is horrific. It's like not so psychobabble. It's so surreal. All too true. Uh, except Jesus as your savior. 
by Marino Delfino, London, February 2014. Yeah, so, okay, I'm going to play the video now so you can see what, what we're talking about. Just wanted to give that little preface there so everybody knows this is Marino Delfino. I did not create this. I do not know where this video came from. The original video is right here as far as I know. Here we go.
first thing we're going to talk about are the types of development and the first type of development is a metabolist development and that just means that the insect when it's really really small and just hatched looks exactly the same as the adult except it's smaller like exactly the same you could not tell the difference between the baby and the adult except one is really tiny and only your microcoryphia and thysanura really have this. Some of your basal hexapods have this as well. Please note that this term does not apply to anything that isn't an insect. So while spiders look exactly the same as, as they do when they're an adult, as they are when they're a baby, they technically don't have a metabolist development because this term is coined specifically for insects. The next type of development is porometabolist development. And porometabolist development means that the insect looks basically the same as it does as it's an adult, but there are certain characteristics that grow in slowly as the insect matures. So for example, ovipositors and wings will form gradually as the insect grows up, basically. And a lot of times the young will look really, really similar to the adult, if you think of your grasshoppers, for example, but sometimes the young can look really, really different, even though they still have this kind of development. And good examples of that are your, like, heteropteran, so all of your true bugs pretty much have this development, but don't look always very similar to their adult form. The next type of development is hemimetabolist development, and this basically just means that the insect has two very distinct stages, although there is no pupil stage, so it's not complete metamorphosis. But this is things like your dragonflies and your cicadas, something that has a very, very different nymphal looking stage before it emerges into a full adult. And this is really, really great if you're this kind of insect because that means that your young and your adult stage live in two different niches and in two different habitats so you don't have to compete with your offspring. And that's pretty helpful, you know, if you're an insect and having to compete all the time. And so again, some good examples are dragonflies and cicadas. The final kind of development is holometabolist development, and this is complete metamorphosis. Everything else is incomplete metamorphosis. In holometabolist insects, you have a very distinct larval stage and a very distinct pupil stage and a very distinct adult stage. And again, this is really good, similar to the hemimetabolist insects, the adult and the offspring don't compete for resources. Thanks for watching.